Hollywood, 1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We'll present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was, but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session, as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming, or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more from all of the Disney parks around the world, including right here in Tokyo, uh, where I am on an extended visit. And uh, yeah, so here now the news for April 5th, 2024, and there's a lot of big stuff. Don't worry, Eric's fine. Uh, he's at the media event for Star Tours, The Adventures Continue, the new Ahsoka, uh, and... and uh, such scenes, uh, Mandalorian and uh, Andor. So don't worry, Eric's fine. He's just a little busy and I'm filling in. And plus, this was some big news. I felt uh, it'd be good to check in and, and uh, give some notes on some of this stuff. So let's dive right in, shall we? Uh, Disney has shared new images and video of more character audio animatronics for Tiana's Bayou Adventure at both the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. Shared as promotion for We Call It Imagineering, a new YouTube series by WDI, the audio animatronics revealed include Mama Odie, Louis the Alligator, Prince Ralphie, Charlotte LaBeouf, and more of Tiana. The Louis animatronic can be seen holding his trumpet, and through a We Call It Imagineering, Imagineers have shared details about Louis's various movements and how he is one of the most complicated figures uh, they've ever built. Among the 17 character animatronics that'll be on the ride are Prince Ralphie, the younger brother to Prince Naveen. He joins the band on drums. Uh, Tiana can be seen wearing her new adventuring outfit, which was created specifically for the attraction. And according to the video, there will be multiple Tianas on the ride in various states of her costume. The one you're looking at now has Lewis uh, jammed in a log. I was told very specifically this is a reference to Splash Mountain. So um, you had the Brer Bear, uh, Brer Bear was stuck in a tree um, uh, on the way down to the Laughing Place. This is a direct reference to that. So um, while they can't have, you know, explicit references to Splash because of the subject material, and I'm not looking to get into an argument with you, that's, it is what it is, um, they, they can have references in this way. So there may be more, but this one I know specifically is a uh, love letter to Splash Mountain. The Mama Odie animatronic is one of the more impressive ones previewed. Uh, as well. And the cast of The Prince and the Frog will return to voice all these characters in the attraction, including Jennifer Lewis as Mama Odie, Anika Noni Rose as Tiana, Bruno Campos as Naveen, and Michael Leon Woolley as Lewis. And Instagram Reel also reveals a look at the audio animatronics, including a quick glance at the figures for Charlotte LaBeouf or Lottie and Tiana's mother Eudora. This is great, these, these videos lifting the curtain. And I feel like, again, this all indicates a very competent direction. Um, that everything is heading in. Uh, when Bob Chapek was fired um, from the Walt Disney Company, we, we said it would take a while for the regime change to really take effect. And um, I think we had some good signs right away, them taking away resort parking fees, little things that were easy for them to enact, changes to the park reservation system, taking away reservations in a lot of cases for a lot of ticket groups. Um, everything seemed to be heading in the right direction. I think we saw signs of a commitment 
to change. I think that, you know, people made fun of the blue sky thing. Look, during the Bob Chapek era, you would be hard pressed to find someone who was as negative and pessimistic as I was. But I think it was clear, uh, it was clear right away that things were gonna be different and they were making a lot of promises. Yeah, it was blue sky because they, they were still working on it, but they wanted to show a commitment um, to, to what the future was going to be. And now, uh, you know, after Bruce has been back for a year, they've been gearing up for all this, and now uh, it's kind of time to take action. And that's what we're seeing between now and D23, I think is an incredibly exciting period, because I think we're gonna get a lot of announcements and we're gonna see a lot of very cool things. Tiana is the first step on that road where it's clear um, that there is a commitment again to spend money. Um, I think the hallmarks of Bob Chapek's WDI and the hallmarks of Bob Chapek's Disney um, were getting overlays that felt kind of on the cheap side, were projection heavy, um, just didn't wow us. Even in previews, there was nothing really to wow you about these projects. Um, you know, I think about things like Toy Story Land and... Um, you know, the, the, the shortcomings for Galaxy's Edge, the cuts that were made there. Think about projects like that, and there was always just this disappointment. Um, you know, maybe not, the Galaxy's Edge people were pretty hyped, but in, in, in the end, when it debuted, other than Rise, I feel like people were kind of lukewarm. Get it, lukewarm? Um, but I think, in, I think so many people want to hate this Tiana attraction before we ever saw anything of it. And man, every animatronic preview we have gotten so far is better than the last. I mean, Lewis is incredible. These, you know, I, I again, especially during those Chapek years, I ranted and raved about the quality that the Oriental Land Company keeps up in the attractions, at least here in Japan. Uh, these, like I said before, these look to be of the quality of the new Beauty and the Beast ride that opened in 2020. And if we are keeping, um, you know, if we're reaching the quality that, that OLC often feels uh, it often feels like they are always willing to spend, but Disney is not, then I think good things are coming. So, um, you know, I, uh, there's been a lot of talk about, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Epic Universe in a moment. I'll read more stories, but um, this is exciting. These are great looking figures. They, they, you know, if you're going to replace Splash Mountain, you better do a good job. And I think they knew that coming into this project. And um, it leaves me optimistic. I'm not saying it's going to succeed, right? I think what I've said before is story-wise, I think they can misstep, but I think in the end, they're, with animatronics of this quality, it would be at least hard to produce an attraction that a majority of the public will love. Now, will they win over the people that love Splash Mountain and are angry about this? I don't know that you'll ever win those people over, but um, you can try your best, right? And it at least is clear to me that they are trying their best, which is all uh, you could really ask for. But we'll see what happens. Again, Tiana's Bayou Adventure set to open sometime this summer. We still don't have a date uh, for Magic Kingdom. And sometime later this year at Disneyland. Following Disney's settlement with the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District uh, over its state-level lawsuit, Walt Disney World is expected soon to begin the permit process for the Beyond Big Thunder project. This, of course, being the largest expansion in the history of Magic Kingdom and something Disney has said will be bigger than Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in size. According to a report from Scott Gustin on X, Walt Disney World is in the process of filing permits for the development by Magic Kingdom in order to prepare the area for expansion. Gustin also stated Walt Disney Imagineering confirmed earlier this week that Disney will file water management permits in the next few weeks. First announced at the D23 Expo in 2022, this expansion for the Magic Kingdom has included many blue sky ideas, including themed lands for Pixar's Coco, Disney's Encanto, and an entire area dedicated to Disney villains. However, Encanto, of course, shifted over to the Tropical Americas expansion in the development for Animal Kingdom. It's possible Coco is somewhere in there as well with a, with a lesser uh, portion of that plan. Uh, and of course, Indiana Jones, we'll talk about that all in a, in a few moments. Uh, but during Destination D23 in September of 2023, Bruce Vaughn, the chief creative officer of Walt Disney Imagineering, described the project as similar in scope to Pandora, the world of Avatar as well. And in January of 2024, Disney teased even more announcements are to come on the project. So we don't know exactly what's in this project yet, but it is still moving forward. Um, I have heard some things that we're still firming up at this point. Probably next week we'll talk about some of what we know is going on there. Um, but again, a, a big commitment to the future um, for Walt Disney World and the Disney parks around the world, which I think is a positive. I think, um, you know, someone asked Bob Iger 
uh, last week they asked him about Epic Universe and what Disney's doing in preparation. And he said what I've been saying to you on this show for ages that, that you know, the, the people uh, that are very anti-Disney at this point don't want to hear. You don't want to hear the truth. You only want to hear the truth from me when it fit your agenda, right? When when it was negative about Disney. And now that it's getting more positive, you, you don't want to hear it anymore. But the truth with Epic was they, you know, it takes a long time to design and build a theme park. I know we, we talk about how Universal moves faster and blah, blah, blah. But Epic has been in, in you know, uh, process for a decade, right? Um, so with that being said, Disney knew that was on the horizon. And and what Bob said is what we've said is, you know, for the, the several years leading up to today, they're, they were very bullish about spending at Walt Disney World. Now, are they my favorite attractions and lands? Not all of them, right? But starting in 2017, we got Pandora, 2018, Toy Story Land, 2019, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, 2020, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, 2021 was Ratatouille, 2022, Guardians of the Galaxy, 2023, Tron, I hate to tell you this, guys. I know every time we talk about the overseas parks, you guys go on and on about how much love they get. But that is way more than even attraction-wise and land-wise, way more than even Tokyo Disney has built in that time period. Now, we could talk about quality. Several of those things are great. Several of them I'm not a big fan of. Um, but nonetheless, they, they were spending and they were building. And so suddenly after Tron, there's this moment of like taking a breath and everyone's like, oh, they're not doing anything combat epic, but I I think that's delusional. That is a delusional line of thought, and uh, this continued spending. Again, I don't know that any of this is in, in anticipation or in competition. I think Disney believes they compete with themselves. Uh, they believe uh, that they have to keep up with people and try to earn more attendance every year and, and the hefty price they charge for their parks. And uh, like I've said before, I believe you can charge people anything if the product is unrivaled. Going to these parks here, I, I think they're immaculate. I love them. Um, you know, I don't know that they're that they're cheaper than uh, they're cheaper in American dollars to visit. Um, but given the, the what people earn here, it's it's pretty equal, right? It, it's it's very costly for a Japanese guest, given the median salary here, to afford to go to these parks. But I will tell you, given the quality of them, I don't my ceiling on a ticket price would be way higher than it is at Walt Disney World, given that quality. So, um, you know, rising to meet people's expectations for the price is the right goal. And uh, I think that's where we are headed. We'll wait and see. Also in an Instagram reel uh, yesterday, Walt Disney Imagineering shared a preview of the Tropical Americas land that is in development for Disney's Animal Kingdom, including a look at the model for the project. In the video, uh, Neil Emery, principal landscape designer for Walt Disney Imagineering, spoke about a research trip that the team took to the Yucatan Peninsula uh, to help bring the expansion to life. The model shows that Imagineering is moving from the blue sky phase uh, to planning for the project. They've, they've moved way past blue sky at this point. This is very much in development and almost ready to go. Emery also references Indiana Jones with the quote, I've got a really good feeling about this as well as showed off models of a temple for the Indiana Jones area and the Casa Madrigal from Encanto. Both properties have been suggested for the expansion. The update is the first official mention of the project moving uh, ahead since permits were filed by Disney to add Imagineering trailers in the backstage area of Animal Kingdom. The trailers will likely serve as a hub for Imagineers as they work on converting Dino Land USA into the new Tropical Americas project. Of course, this also was first announced at the, at the 2022 uh, D23 Expo was talked about more at the Destination D23 event in 2023. And uh, yeah, so they originally, it was talked about, it originally was going to be Moana and Zootopia. It morphed and became tropical or yeah, the tropical Americas and became Encanto and Indian, maybe a little bit of cocoa in there too, which they haven't really talked about or hinted at. But it, it, if you look at the concept art, maybe it's there. Um, this is moving forward, and we know this is the next thing, right? This is the next thing that's going to break ground. Before they break ground at Magic Kingdom, before they break ground on anything else, they're going to announce at D23, which there's other stuff being announced, I will tell you. Um, this is the next thing that's going to start, so that's pretty exciting. I love the fact that they did a research trip. It means that I know reskinning a dinosaur into an Indiana Jones adventure seems like an easy thing, but it also seems like they're going to take a unique approach. Um, in this, in that they, they visited um, this region and are doing the right research. 
Um, you know, the, the Indiana Jones adventure here at Tokyo Disney Sea is themed to the tropical America, Central America ish. Um, it's Indiana Jones and the uh, Temple of the Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Crystal Skull. Um, I don't think they're going to copy that, but I think there will be some interesting similarities for sure. But I'm glad it won't be the same as the Disneyland one. That's great. Um, I love that. And uh, we'll have to see what the Encanto attraction is. We don't know at this point, but um, it's exciting that we're, we're about to see some progress. Ahead of that April 5th debut uh, at both Walt, or both, I should say, at Walt Disney World uh, Disneyland and uh, Disneyland Paris as well. Disney has, re has released the new poster for the current version of Star Tours The Adventures Continue. Disney Parks shared the new poster on their Instagram account in anticipation of that, again, that April 5th debut. By the time you're watching this, um, we should have footage already. In addition to the image Disney shared along with the mission to the, to the planet Cetos, you may also encounter Ahsoka Tano, Cassian Andor, Din Djarin, and Grogu. The attraction update is set to include characters and locations from the Disney Plus series Ahsoka, The Mandalorian, and Andor, as we talked about before. And as hinted in the poster, we can see the Star Speeder 1000 vehicle that guests are riding in the attraction, the Pergil, the whales that have appeared in episodes of Ahsoka and one episode of The Mandalorian, and Ahsoka's T6 Jedi shuttle in the background. Um, they previewed, they showed a little footage of this scene uh, previously as well. So, um, but yeah, new poster, which they've done for every time they've done an update of this attraction, so no surprises there. Walt Disney World has announced they're bringing back the popular VI Pass Holder Days to their theme parks this summer. This year, VI Pass Holder Days will run from May 1st through June 26th, and available to annual pass holders, the offerings for the event will include limited time magnets, a lounge, discounts, and more. The VI Pass Holder Days last year included the Figment Magnet, a lounge in Epcot with free Snickers and, uh, stickers and snacks, not Snick, I don't know if they had Snickers. I don't know. But there were free stickers and snacks, an exclusive magic shot, and a limited time figment treat as well. Uh, more details will be announced at a later date. So a very rare occurrence took place at Walt Disney World this week in that the Magic Kingdom was not allowing guests to park hop into it on April 4th. On April 4th, around 1 p.m., the option to park hop to Magic Kingdom was made unavailable on the My Disney Experience app. Guests who already made park reservations could enter the park and were not impacted by the change. Park hopping was set to be available all day from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., but obviously that did not happen. The block out for Magic Kingdom park hopping included annual pass holders, even past the once mandatory 2 p.m. start time, as we were given the above update on the My Disney Experience app, the one you're looking at now. Uh, per guest relations, all guests attempting to enter Magic Kingdom without a reservation would be stopped at the Transportation and Ticket Center. However, if you had a dining reservation but no park reservation for Magic Kingdom and are an annual pass holder, you would be allowed into the park with just enough time to make it to your reservation comfortably. We lost, last saw park hopping become unavailable to guests on October 1st, 2021, the first day of the 50th anniversary celebration. Um, this has not happened since. This is such a rarity. Why did it happen on April 4th? I think we're just seeing uh, a weird surge in... in uh, Guess right now, I know Easter just happened a couple days ago, but um, seems kind of random. But yeah, suddenly there was there was a day where where you couldn't park up for a couple hours. It did eventually, a couple hours later, they, they did allow guests to park up once again. But something to be mindful of, maybe this is going to start happening more. A new special offer for the Walt Disney World Resort is giving Disney Visa card holders uh, a free dining plan for select arrival dates in 2024. Starting April 9th, Guests who have a Disney Visa card can now get a free dining plan for select arrival dates in July, September, and December when booking a non-discounted four-night, four-day, or longer Walt Disney Travel Company package with Park Hopper option. If you're looking to book this latest offer, be sure to reach out to our friends at Be Our Guest Vacations to unlock uh, unbeatable deals and create your own magical escape. Uh, it's a great way to book this offer and get more details on it as well. Just go to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT. There's a brand new menu at Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Eric and the gang went to check it all out. Among the new items, uh, there are fried mozzarella sticks, a burrata salad, tomato bruschetta, house garlic bread, marinated olives, which is plant-based, a mushroom artichoke cheese and cheese dip as well. 
For entrees, there's a new fettuccine alfredo with shrimp, prosciutto and honey pizza, mushroom and goat cheese pizza as well, a margarita pizza, a braised pork asabuco, a rigatoni bolognese, and the new chef selection of fresh fish, which was grouper uh, when we visited. For dessert, there is the new goat cheese mousse tart, the pasta chiotti cream tart, I think that's what that is, and the flourless chocolate cake as well. Um, if you want our thoughts on all this, you can read them at WDWNT.com or you can watch uh, Eric's review uh, right here on our channel. A tangy new orange cream milkshake is available at the Sunshine Seasons in Epcot at Walt Disney World. Sunshine Seasons is found in the Land Pavilion located in the World Nature neighborhood of Epcot or Future World if you're old like me. The orange cream milkshake is $8.99. It's orange vanilla shake topped with whipped buttercream garnished with an orange macaron on a popsicle stick you can read the review at www.nt.com. The BDX roaming animatronic droids that first debuted during a playtest several months ago at Disneyland Resort are going to become a daily staple of the Season of the Force at Disneyland Park uh, pretty much immediately. The, uh, the three droids, which were tested in the streets of Black Spire Outpost last year, will be a daily part of the Season of the Force celebration, appearing in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. They can be found roaming around Black Spire Outpost throughout the length of the event, which will be April 5th through June 2nd. Of course, if you're curious about the offerings in the event, stay tuned. Uh, Ali and the team at Disneyland will be covering all of that uh, starting today. The Season of the Force event will also see a new nighttime show, attraction overlays, exclusive merchandise, food and beverage, and more. Uh, when we spotted the droids in training, cast members were calling them by their colors, green, blue, and orange. At the time, executive R&D Imagineer, of Walt Disney Imagineering, Joel Peavy said, we're playtesting our new legged walking character platform at Disneyland Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, walking them through the land to help us better understand what types of interactions will really resonate with our guests. You, of course, can watch that test uh, right here on our channel. We were there for it, and this is exciting. I'm glad this is becoming a daily thing. Um, this is the magic that was supposed to be in Galaxy's Edge before, um, you know, the Chapek administration and park management hacked that all away from us. Um, so I'm very happy to see this uh, going to be offered daily. I hope it stays past Season of the Force, but if not, if it comes back as like a seasonal thing, that's great. But we need to bring Galaxy's Edge to life. It needs to feel inhabited, and this goes a long way towards making that happen. Decor has begun to arrive for Pixar Fest at the Disneyland Resort, even though, again, uh, Season of the Force is this the thing here that we're actively marketing right now, but Pixar Fest is around the corner and decor is already going up at the downtown Disney district. Our new Toy Story sculpture is the first of that decor to arrive. Uh, it's in a flower bed atop a fresh pile of dirt. It has a similar retro design uh, as the sculpture that's coming to Main Street USA. A white pole is topped with a yellow ball. The ball has a, small, a smaller yellow, blue, and red ball sticking out of it. And uh, yellow, blue, and red are the main colors of Pixar, drawn from the iconic Luxo Jr. ball, of course. Buzz and Woody are in a circle near the top of the sculpture. The shape has a white border and a shiny blue center, and it's a white ring, uh, and it looks like it may spin. Jesse is pictured on a white plaque against a yellow gold four-pointed star as well, and Forky is also on a white plaque against a four, a red, this time a red uh, four-pointed star in this case. The same characters are pictured on the other side of the sculpture as well. Disneyland Resort will celebrate Pixar Fest from April 26th through August 4th, including that brand new uh, parade coming in, Better Together, a Pixar Pals celebration, a California Adventure, the return of Together Forever, a Pixar Nighttime Spectacular at Disneyland, and as well, much, much more. And stay tuned. We, of course, will bring you coverage of all that, too. For more on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check out WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. Uh, if you'd like to support this show and others, you can join the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. It's a great way to get exclusive content, uh, exclusive access, and more to so much of what we do and support uh, the continued production of this show and as well uh, my Tokyo vlogs, which are happening right now. Um, the third one might be out by the time you watch that. If not, uh, you can at least check out my review of the first ever Tokyo Disney Sea Food and Wine Festival. Check out that review and my vlogs. I'm going to be doing a lot more of those um, during my extended stay. I hope you enjoy those. But for the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.